Welcome everyone to this IIED webinar. My, my name is Sam Green from IIED and I will be uh, moderating today's uh, uh, programme. So I uh, just firstly want to extend a warm welcome to all of you dialing in. We have uh, people registered from over 50 countries. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, wherever it is that you are. I'm gonna give a quick overview of what you can expect from this session and introduce CBA 14 main themes, which will then set up the Cartoonathon and everything that's coming. So first, after a quick overview of the themes, we will go into a Cartoonathon, which will be used to explore those themes in more detail using humor. Uh, and I'll hand over to Red Cross Red Crescent Climate Center to talk more about that in a few moments. After the Cartoonathon, there'll be breakout groups, which will be an opportunity to meet other participants and explore some of these issues in more detail. We'll then have three uh, uh, short presentations from grassroots perspectives on what we can learn from the response from COVID-19 that can inform climate action. There'll be a little bit of time for a Q&A and we'll finish with an, uh, an overview on the road to CBA 14, what you can expect between now and then, and some details on how to find out more about the program and how to register. So turning now just towards CBA 14's themes. And these draw on uh, our previous years of three main themes that broadly reflect the Paris Agreement's means of implementation. And I'll talk through these in turn. The climate finance theme will look at how public and private sector finance can be accountably and transparently mobilized to scale up climate action while remaining inclusive. And this year in particular, we'll look at how we take small funds that are delivering climate finance and incubate them and grow them so that they can get to scale. We really want to explore how we can address the missing middle of climate finance, the gap between small innovative projects to large scale programs that can benefit the most vulnerable at scale. The adaptation technology theme will explore how to bring about adaptation at national level and be integrated through policy and finance. The theme builds very much on the learning from CBA 12 and 13, and we'll look at how to leverage adaptation technology for greater investment and support whilst relying on the perspective of communities to understand how the adaptation technology should be used that can benefit them. The responsive policy theme looks at how policy can respond to the needs of the most vulnerable and this year will focus specifically on social movements. How can social movements inform policy that is ambitious enough to meet Paris Agreement targets and improve climate adaptation for communities? This year to reflect the changing environment that we're working with and to recognize that these issues are increasingly important, we've added two new themes. The nature-based solutions theme will look at how nature-based solutions can be made to work for people, nature and climate, recognizing that we need to recognize bio biodiversity loss as a challenge that is equal to that of climate change and start looking at these together rather than at separate silos. The youth stream will be led entirely by youth organizations and young people and will explore how we can transform our institutions so that they can take advantage of young people's participation in delivering local level adaptation. It will specifically seek to understand how we can properly incorporate the views of young people so that they can have a greater, more influential say in the policies that will shape their own future. So that gives a quick overview of the CBA 14 themes. And I'm going to hand over now to Red Cross Red Crescent's Climate Center's Pablo Suarez and Margot Curl, who will take us into the Cartoonathon, where we'll explore some of these issues in more depth. Thank you, Sam. Hello, friends. Greetings from Boston. My name is Pablo Suarez. I work with the Red Cross Red Crescent Climate Center. I'm in charge of research and innovation. And I'm happy to report that CBA changed my life. When I was a student over a decade and a half ago, I attended CBA 1 in Bangladesh. It was a lot of effort for me at the time. And guess what? I became a fan of the need to connect knowledge with action for the most vulnerable. And here we are trying, like from day one, in the context of CBA, trying new things. In this session, 
we are going to try something unconventional. I am now pushing buttons. I hope that you can see the introductory slide on harnessing humor to address climate risks. What we're going to do first is invite you to think, what do you think of when you think of humor? What words come to mind? Please go to the chat function on Zoom and everyone type one word that you think of when you think of humor. Go. And as you think of that, what is it that you think of when you think of humor? I can tell you the words that have most often come to mind. All right, some people are annotating. There's fun. These are the words that I often hear. Fun, laughter, comedy, comics, smile, enjoy. Smart is probably the only word in there that maybe seems to have a connection between what we do in community-based adaptation and humor. Now, did anybody think of the word death? It turns out when I was beginning to work with professional humorists, including Bob Manko, who is best known for his work at the New Yorker magazine, Bob looked at me in the eye and when I asked him, what do you think of when thinking of humor? He said, death. And let me share one cartoon that matters. This is, this is the way I see our current situation. It may look like it's a normal day. We're doing what we normally do, sit, read, converse. But things are changing, and that change can be gradual until it is fast and abrupt. And things can become turbulent and very problematic. Now, the original caption of this cartoon said, we've got to talk. Unfortunately, in most events that involve climate change in general and community-based adaptation in particular, we are still learning how to have conversations. I have attended every single one UN climate conference since 2004, 17 consecutive UNFCCC COPs. And this is what they look like. Thousands of people for two weeks sitting down and listening to boring talks with lack of having insufficient Q&A. How much fun do you see in those events? I anticipate that the absence of joy correlates with the absence of progress in community-based adaptation. What can we do to make things richer, to make things more engaging, to make things more fun? Because fun is functional for what we need to accomplish. Check out this cartoon. A traffic jam, cars are not moving forever, and the passenger says to the driver, try honking again. Well, guess what? If you honk in a traffic jam, you're not going to go anywhere. Nothing will change. I like this cartoon because it speaks of the problem being in the system. The problem will not be solved by honking. The problem is closer to where we are, the audience. We have to change something, we have to unclog, we have to reimagine, we have to widen the highway of our thinking and our action. We keep honking messages. Gender is important, we need to engage youth, nature can be part of the solution, more money is needed. You've heard Sam talk about those five themes. This time we're going to invite you to do something unconventional using humor, cartoons that were made intentionally for this event so that we can explore how we, CBA community, have been stuck in our message and what can we do to come up with new ways of thinking. This is one example from one of our cartoonathons, the last one we did face-to-face -face before coronavirus paralyzed interactions. This is uh, Madam Deputy Minister of Finance of the government of Afghanistan looking at that same cartoon and annotating with other peers, including from the World Bank. And they wrote, let's create a project like the other one that we did last year, which also failed. You can see candor emerge in the context of humor. And you are going to have that opportunity. You will be able to have candid conversations about what matters to us all. Getting to near the end of my slides, these are the words that professional cartoonists think of when they think of humor. Of course, they also think of laughter and fun and smiles, 
but they look at the causes of humor, tension, conflict, risk, danger, contradiction, ambiguity, what can go wrong, context, out of context. You will see in the cartoons created for this event that our cartoon artists have explored the five themes with a new angle inviting us to notice those things that are under the hood, those things that underlie the reasons why we don't have as much progress as we want. I wish you successful explorations and conversations. It will be new, it will be intense. These are the three artists that have supported our work, Emily Flake, Pat Burns, and Rebecca Rivola. You will see their cartoons, but also they will be working live, creating new cartoons, adapting them based on what comes from our conversation, from your feedback. So thanks again for the opportunity to join yet another CBA event. And I will pass it over to my dear colleague, Bettina. Bettina, over to you. Thank you so much, Pablo. And um, I also want to say, Pablo, I think uh, CBA is also important because this is where we met many, many years ago doing our first out of, this, out of the box session. So it's really, really nice to um, be here with all of you. We would now like to invite you to view in a gallery as if you would walk into an art gallery, walk with us into our virtual gallery and look at the suggestions of the cartoon artists that they have shared with you. If you can open your internet browser right now, and please, if you have the choice, open Google Chrome or another browser, maybe not Safari, um, and type in ce.goodfocus.net. Um, we can also put that in the chat, ce.goodfocus.net. And if you can then, and if you can click next, Pablo, um, if you can then type in the following. The event code is CBA14. If you can type in CBA14, your email address that we'll only use to make sure that we know who is entering um, and that you have a unique identifier and the name that you'd like to be displayed. And then click login. And uh, next, Pablo. While you're doing this, you'll be able to see the cartoon drafts. These are drafts, cartoons, or rough cartoons that uh, have been suggested by the artists that actually engaged with this, um, with the thematic, with the, with the topics. And here you can see um, at the bottom, there is, a blue, there is a blue field here where you can add some comments. Please add some comments. And Pablo, if you can click next. Um, then press the button here at the bottom that says submit and you'll get a confirmation that your comments has been submitted. Then you can add more comments if you would like or otherwise click next. There are a number of cartoons. There are quite a few. So um, please scroll through all of them, comment to the ones that you would like um, and skip the ones that you feel speak less to you. So we can have a comment on all of them. I think here we go. Enjoy the gallery experience. You have only six minutes. So um, enjoy this now and then you'll be able to see everyone's comments afterwards in the viewing. All right, we're ending the comment phase. You can still view the cartoons. We would now like you to um, submit your last comment and we will stop the solo gallery for now. And you will then be able to see all the cartoons with all the comments. You can scroll through it. You might have to go either click next or refresh your browser to be able to see that. What is going to happen now is that after we view the comments, the cartoon artists who are also on this call are going to have a critical look at your comments, your suggestions, and will then be able to um, 
see if they can adjust one of their cartoons to reflect some of the comments that you have shared. And at the end, we'll have an opportunity for the cartoon artists to share their cartoons um, in an amended version, um, reflecting your comments and suggestions um, back to you as an audience. And uh, I think with this, I will hand over to Margot for the next step. So our next thing is going to be the breakout groups. Um, and I, I really hope you enjoyed um, the cartoons that you saw. Uh, when I saw them myself for the first time this morning, I had a good chuckle. Um, I found them very recognizable for, uh, for my work. And I hope you saw bits and pieces that you recognize and are relevant for your work as well. Um, and now we'll have, the, for the next 10 minutes, we'll have time to discuss this. So um, the host is now going to uh, create as many breakout rooms as um, Zoom is going to allow. So David, if you can try to set up, uh, up all those breakout groups now, that'd be fantastic. Um, and then uh, we'll invite all of you to join a breakout room. Um, the breakout groups will last for 10 minutes. Um, and in your breakout group, um, it'd be great if you can just do a quick round of names and countries where you're from and then have a discussion with the gallery open, which cartoon that you find inspiring and why? And how does this relate to the CBA themes? And as a quick reminder what the CBA themes are, these are the five climate finance, adaptation technology, responsive policy, nature-based solutions and including youth. Um, and with that, uh, David, I'd like to invite you to open the breakout groups and send people there for the next 10 minutes. Hi. We see lots of people coming back now. And even still some more people joining CBA where, um, this webinar. Welcome to everyone who's new to this webinar. We've just finished a breakout session where we've been um, discussing um, a, a set of cartoons that have been created especially for this session. If you want to see the cartoons, uh, oh sorry I've just sent that to um, David, um, uh, I've just uh, pasted a link in the chat box where uh, you can see an overview of all the cartoons. So you can go to the website ce.goodfocus.net and the event code is CBA14. If you have Google Chrome, um, that works really well. And then you can just enter your name and email address and you can see all the cartoons that have been talked about that have been created specifically for this year's CBA. Um, now it'd be great to hear from one or two people um, some elements of the discussion. Um, we, we realize there's been some technical issues um, and, and we'll follow up on that later. But for now, it'd be really lovely if someone would like to share um, something really inspiring, exciting that you've uh, been discussing in your groups. Um, so I don't know if anyone would like to raise their hand and um, share something in plenary. Hi Margaret. Hi Margaret. I can do from our group if you yes, don't mind. Yes, please. We yeah. Okay. I'm Sapna. Sapna Basnit Bester from uh, the UK, originally from Nepal. We had. Uh, I think the time wasn't enough uh, for the discussion because half of the time we were confused what we were supposed to be doing. However, um, uh, two of the the uh, pictures uh, we discussed discussed and uh, they were very interesting points. Uh, the first one was. Um, the one by uh, Pat Barnes, is that how you say the surname? And uh, it was the picture with uh, an adult holding a placard to the youth. And we were talking, uh, you yep. know, how youth, uh, he was trying to teach youth how to do it. Uh, so uh, one of the, the colleagues, uh, participants, said that uh, youth engagement is evident uh, now uh, in, in lo at local level and global level which is very uh, kind of encouraging. Um, and my reflection uh, was that uh, it may be very evident, but however, sometimes it's also very tokenistic at, uh, at times. Uh, and this is what the picture depicts almost by undermining the capacity of the youth and, uh, and their knowledge. So that was uh, one uh, that we discussed. And the other one was uh, the one with Rebecca 
Ravola, is that how you say the surname? Yeah. And it, it was about climate finance, the, the red picture of uh, dollars go, uh, flying up uh, out of reach up in the sky. And uh, one of the, the participants uh, said that even though it is, you know, it's somewhat circulated in a, at a global level about how uh, available the climate finance is, it's so much out of reach for the countries with you know diverse ecosystem and diverse forest and so on uh, to, uh, to get it and i agree with that because all of these international funding are so complicated to to um, you know the application process is so complicated that people at local level who can make the difference can never reach that funding so i think uh, that was two points that we discussed thank you Thank you very much. That's a brilliant reflections and I think an extremely exciting start of the CBO process. So there, there's some there's some difficult messages there. How can we stop youth engagement from being tokenistic and um, uh, are there exciting discussions to be had at the upcoming CBA to see how we can really engage youth in a meaningful way and, and how can we make sure the, 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 the dollars aren't flying around but um, uh, that's that money actually reaches people on the ground uh, in line with the community-based adaptation that all of you are, um, are interested in. So thank you very much for those reflections. Um, I would like to invite uh, one more reflection. Is there someone else who had an exciting discussion in your group? Would like to share something? Ronald? <laughs> thank you so much uh, for this exciting opportunity. Uh, group eight, well, we were sharing about the cartoons. So, so several members were not able yet to access the site. Uh, but to me, when I was looking at the cartoons, they are what the, the impressions, what the meaning of the cartoons into our actualization of work. Uh, we really shared uh, about how people can really stand up uh, without making tomorrow to be another tomorrow because a better tomorrow is made today. How they can wake up not to stand still but to mo get moving, to understand that climate is real, climate change is real, is reality and uh, how we can engage all categories of people from the youth, uh, the women, including the disabled, because they are all uh, human beings and they can contribute uh, to the climate change in one way or the other. So uh, it was really so impressive when we were discussing about it. And uh, in, in this case, we so enjoyed, though the time was little. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ronald. And uh, I, I think that's given us plenty of food for thought. Um, uh, definitely an exciting point there about inclusion, not only of youth, but also of the other stakeholder groups that you were talking about. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to the, the next part here, the Ignite Talks, hearing um, from different corners of the world um, uh, what is going on uh, on the ground at the moment. Um, and just to let you know as well, I don't know, um, some of you have just logged in. What we've done so far is uh, we've reviewed new cartoons that have been created, especially around the five CBA themes. Uh, there have been group discussions about it. Um, and there's actually some cartoonists, three cartoonists at the moment, um, updating um, one of their cartoons each, um, and they'll share them with us at the end of this session. So do stay tuned for these updated cartoons. Um, thank you all very much for participating. And uh, with that, I'm happy to hand this back over to Sam for the next bit. Thank you very much. So we're going to move now whilst those cartoonists uh, work on the cartoons to the next stage of this uh, session. Uh, we're going to invite three speakers from with uh, uh, in-depth community speak community perspectives to talk about their experiences and what we can learn from COVID-19 uh, and the response that can inform climate, climate action so that we can build back better in the future. So we have Musonda Kapena from the Zambia National Forest Commodity Association, Godavari Danj from the Saki Women's Federation in Maharashtra, India, and Dr. Liakat Ali from Barak, Bangladesh. So I'm going to go straight over to Musonda Kapena now uh, to give her perspective from Zambia. So over to you, Musonda. 
Greetings, everybody. My name is Msonda Kapena, and I'm representing the Zambia National Forest Commodity Association. We're based in Lusaka, Zambia. We work with a lot of um, forest and forest and farm facility producer groups. And I'm here to make a very short presentation on how we are coping with COVID-19, looking at nature-based solutions. So a brief synopsis on the African continent. Um, Africa is the home of 25% of the world's remaining rainforest, but they are quickly disappearing. And on top of that, we have as a continent, 70% of the population depend on forests. Their sustenance is forest and woodland based. It has been from time immemorial. Um, we've suffered quite a lot of climate change and it's already impacting on Africa's forests, on our, bio, on our biodiversity, and also it's affecting people's livelihoods. Looking at the land use change and the amount of, and the increase in the population that is there, and all this is contributing to the greenhouse emissions. So as an association, we are cognizant of the fact that there's urgent need to manage the natural resources better, and especially in this um, advent of COVID and other diseases. How do we then go back to the forest to find solutions that would then mitigate not only the effects of COVID-19, but also the effects of climate change, which have been brought about um, looking at how much forest cover we have lost. So as a country, what we have done through the association we are working with is that um, we are supporting forest groups. Forest groups are those communities which live within forest areas and survive mainly on the resources that are from the forest. And most of these produce are like the forest herbs. Forest herbs for a long time have been used indigenously as medicines and as a food supplement. And also we have had a lot of practices around the ancient ways of steaming out of the body or steaming the body with um, infusions of herbs so that our immunity is boosted. Then on top of that, we incubate community-owned businesses so that they are able to engage in a diversified value chain, which would then still rely on the biodiversity of the forest, but then feed into local and regional and national value chains. This is in response to the fact that the global value chains have really been disrupted because of the COVID-19. Zambia is landlocked, so not really landlocked, but landlinked. We don't have, um, we do not have a harbor to any of the oceans or water bodies. So it, everything that we receive comes in through the road network or by air. And of course, as we may all know, road traffic is easier and cheaper than air traffic. But right now, a lot of our neighbors' borders are closed because of the lockdown. But we're happy to say that most of our forest communities are able to supply solutions on what herbs work for the symptoms of COVID, like the flus and the coughs and the headaches and stuff like that. So as an association working with the community forest groups, we are also promoting the consumption of eco-friendly, climate smart and diversified local products, such as the foods. We eat a lot of forest fruits. We eat a lot of mushrooms when they're in season. We consume a lot of um, indigenous herbs. And also we've actually found out that there's a lot of other forest products which are used in India and China and around the world which we have in our ecosystems which are actually useful in mitigating the health and economic aspects of the COVID pandemic and also this has also helped us to realize that the more we conserve the forests we'll be conserving the biodiversity and then 
our people are more able to harvest herbs and foods which for the relatively past time we found that we had ignored because we thought it was primitive and native but right now everybody is going back to the forest to consume these foods so from the pictures you can see that there's a lady who's um crushing seeds what she's doing is she's extracting um mongongo oil and the other lady was showcasing what they have as a forest group so yeah so there's a lot of stuff that comes out of the forest and the pictures here are evidence of that this slide is looking at the value addition of the forest products that we actually have and these are predominantly um, what our forests are able to provide we have a whole lot of diverse products but these are the most popular in the first picture, you can see that we have baobab as it exists on the tree. The second picture shows the raw fruit and the seeds inside of baobab. The last picture shows the various products that can be made from baobab. So traditionally, most people do not really find it valuable or interesting to eat the raw fruit mainly because they think it's from the village and it's native. But we've experienced quite a lot of turnover when we've added value and repackaged these products into more desirable packaging with nutritional information and of course expiry dates so through the um, through the support of znfca to our community members we are also able to support the landscape approach which ensures ecological resilience and watershed management so a lot of the rural areas have better and sustainable access to food, to fuel, to forests, to medicine and water that are important for their continued livelihoods and health. It's important here to note that we really haven't received any reports of COVID from the rural areas. We're receiving a lot of high numbers on infection and unfortunately deaths from the urban areas. So the question we have is what are the rural forest communities doing right, which we are not? Then also through the association, we've been able to lobby and advocate for the rights of local communities. Looking at um, this um, indispensable foundation for, it, for it, empowering them also to cope on the COVID-19 impacts. Just and one minute also, left, Mishonda, if that's okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And also how we can assist them to champion nature-based solutions against um, climate change. So what we're seeking is more investment in supporting the community-based organizations whose knowledge we need right now. I know that there's a lot of um, academic and intellectual knowledge out there but then at this point in time we need to also go back to the forest communities and tap into their indigenous knowledge systems to find out what they have been doing right which we could then add value to and package for mitigation of not only COVID but all these other environmental problems and climate change impacts that we are suffering right now so thanks a lot I think my time is up I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much, Musonda. Uh, and I should add that if anybody has questions, please do post them in the chat. We won't have much time for questions, but we will save the transcript and we can also uh, share those questions with the speakers after the session so that they can try and feedback in a different way. So we're going to go now to a recorded video from Godvari Danj. Um, she is on the call and will be able to answer any questions uh, or hear any feedback from the comments that you're making in the chat. So, Becky, if you can trigger that video now. Thank you. Namaste. My name is Godavari. I am Secretary of the Saki Federation in Maharashtra, India, and a member of the Viro Commission. 
before women were organized they never stepped out of their homes after the 1993 latur earthquake swayam shikshan prayog organized grassroots women into sgs and supported them to come forward as leaders who participated in community development लीडर बन गया तो बहुत अच्छे से काम किया है तो उसके बाद हमारे यहाँ की सिचुएशन द मराठवाड़ा रीजन ऑफ महाराष्ट्र इज ससेप्टेबल टू रिकरिंग ड्राउट्स ड्यू टू क्लाइमेट चेंज ड्राउट हैज सीवियरली अफेक्टेड द फूड न्यूट्रिशन एंड लाइवलीहुड सिक्योरिटी ऑफ कम्युनिटीज नुकसान हो रहे और जो ये बिजनेस भी हमारे यहाँ बंद हो रहे हैं हमारे जो महिला है महिला आगे आ, आगे आके बहुत अच्छे से काम कर रहे हैं कि ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग का हमने बहुत अच्छा काम किया है कि वन एकर मॉडल किया है टू डील विद दिस जो एक ग्रास रूट वुमेन लीडर्स डेवलप एंड एडॉप्टेड दी वन एकर ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग मॉडल इन विच दे डाइवर्सिफाइड इन टू ट्वेंटी फाइव वेराइटीज ऑफ फूड ग्रीन एंड वेजिटेबल्स इन देर फार्म एंड किचन गार्डन खेती में भी उसको ये किया है कि और दिस इज एंश्योरिंग फूड एंड न्यूट्रिशन सिक्योरिटी फॉर वुमेन देर फैमिलीज एंड कम्युनिटी उसका भी अच्छे से खाना मिल रहा है और न्यूट्रिशन भी उसका अच्छा हो रहा है अब भी हमारे महिला इन रिस्पॉन्स टू द कोविड नाइन्टीन क्राइसिस वुमेन लीडर्स ऑर्गेनाइज स्पेशल सखी टास्क ये लीडर महिला गाँव में कोविड में जैसा कि सर्वे किया है माइग्रेंट लोग आए थे तो उनका सर्वे किया है और जो गांव में जो द टास्क फोर्स सर्वे रिटर्निंग माइग्रेंट्स हु वेर पर्टिकुलरली वनरेबल टू असेस द सिचुएशन विद रिगार्ड टू फूड सेफ वाटर एंड सैनिटेशन एंड बेसिक हेल्थ एंड हाइजीन इन इंस्टीट्यूशनल क्वारंटीन एंड वी प्रोवाइडेड इंफॉर्मेशन एंड काउंसल दोज इन डिस्ट्रेस टॉयलेट साफ सुथरा है क्या ये सब देखे उन्होंने अच्छा जाके मॉनिटरिंग किया है और उधर के लोगों को अच्छा मानसिक समाधान दिया है जो लोग है माइग्रेंट लोग शहर में रहते थे पुना बॉम्बई से वो गांव में आए हैं और गांव में आने के बाद उनके हाथ में कुछ भी काम नहीं था। फ्रॉम सिटी सच एस पुणे एंड मुंबई है लॉस देयर जॉब्स एंड हैव इनफ फूड टू ईट। उनके साथ बात किया और उनके साथ उनके पास कौन सा स्किल है वुमेन लीडर्स वर्क विद दिस माइग्रेंट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड देयर स्किल्स एंड देन सेट आउट टू मैच देयर स्किल्स विद वर्क अपॉर्चुनिटीज जो लीडर महिला है तो उन्होंने उनको पहले जाके मुलाकात इन नीले गाँव विलेज द वुमेन्स ग्रुप गेव लोन फ्रॉम देयर ग्रुप सेविंग टू माइग्रेंट वर्कर्स टू स्टार्ट स्मॉल बिजनेसेस सच एस फोटो कॉपिंग शॉप एंड स्नैक शॉप मशीन है होटल है ऐसा अलग अलग बिजनेस उनके करने के लिए करने के लिए बोला और उनको मदद की है की आर्थिक पैसा भी उन्होंने सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप से वो निकल के दिया है उनको उसके साथ हमारे जो महिला लीडर महिला है तो गांव में जो गवर्नमेंट की स्कीम को आर वुमेन लीडर्स वर्क इन पार्टनरशिप विद द लोकल गवर्नमेंट टू प्रोवाइड इंफॉर्मेशन टू कम्युनिटी माइग्रेंट लोग पर्टिकुलरली माइग्रेंट वर्कर्स रिगार्डिंग गवर्नमेंट प्रोग्राम्स एंड एंटाइटलमेंट सच एज द नेशनल रूरल एम्प्लॉयमेंट गारंटी प्रोग्राम वे पीपल कैन बी एम्प्लॉयड इन फार्मिंग एंड वाटर कंजर्वेशन पॉन डी सेल्टिंग एंड अदर वर्क खेती के अलग अलग काम है खेत तले है जो पानी का जो काम हो रहा है तो वो मिला के उनको दिया है उसके बाद गांव में पी कैसा अच्छा आ रहा क्या और किसके पास रेशन कार्ड है किसके पास ऑल्सो आर वुमेन एक्सप्लेन द प्रोसीडियर्स एंड फैसिलिटेटेड एक्सेस टू फ्री राशन अंडर द पब्लिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम फॉर फैमिलीज इन पार्टनरशिप विद द लोकल अथॉरिटी काम किया है और उसके बाद खेती और बिजनेस के साथ में भी बहुत अच्छे से महिला ने काम किया है कि खेती में कम से कम हमारे जो महिला है तो खेती में आर फेडरेशन वुमेन गेव रूपीज ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स लोन to their members for farming and other allied businesses which had local marketing opportunities aur marketing hai aisa business karne ke liye humne federation se unko 25 lakh tak humne mahilaon ko fund diya hai aur government ke sath jo gaon level we partnered with the local government at village block and district level to advocate and jointly plan to improve access to government programs for communities affected by the covid crisis planning karke humne unko sath lobby karke bahut acche se Our message is that being organized, having a strong grassroots network, and our robust partnerships with the local government allowed us to deal with the COVID-19 crisis and help our communities and the migrant workers. और भी एक recommendation है कि हमेरा कि जो 
हमारे यहाँ जो माइग्रेंट लोग है तो उनके लिए Uh, and my request to the government is to come up with some measures and solutions including enterprise opportunities for the migrants thank you thank you very much for that presentation uh, godavari um and again if there are any questions we can bring those to godavari afterwards and we'll have a, a short opportunity to do that so I'm going to hand over now to Dr. Liaquat Ali, who is uh, uh, from BRAC in Bangladesh. Over to you, Dr. Ali. Welcome, everybody. I am going to present the community response due to COVID-19 and BRAC experience. Next slide, please. You see, Bangladesh is impacted by climate change for a long time, and now the extra burden uh, added to the uh, climate change impact and which ultimately resulted socioeconomic and public health crisis, loss and damage of life and properties. And all of us know Bangladesh is very good at managing the disasters. They have a very good robust management system which is under challenge due to COVID. And a loss of livelihoods and a migration impacted and food and water security is also under threat. Currently, Bangladesh is dealing with two current emergencies. One is COVID-19, another one is climate change. Both are fatal, life and death. Community transmission increasing. It's already crossed 200,000 and also deaths. And within this uh, COVID situation, cyclone-like Ampan hits Bangladesh and India. It causes huge damages, about US dollar 130 million, especially one third of the country is in the coastal zone, coastal zones. And annual seasonal flooding is also adding uh, during COVID. At this moment, the northeastern part of Bangladesh is under flood because you know there is a huge flood in China and in, in India. So we are the downstream country and we are suffering due to this flood. And currently, this is the period where dengue is outbreak, the dengue season. So the symptom of dengue and corona is similar, which is mixed up and it's, it's adding extra burden to the people. And also peoples, those who are living in most vulnerable spot in the country, in the rural area, they forced to migrate to the urban slum for better livelihood. But again, due to COVID, they are jobless, they are homeless. So now they are forcing back to their original rural village, again, in a climate hotspot. Next slide, please. So far, BRAC uh, responses during climate, uh, uh, what you call the COVID response and keeping climate change in mind. Uh, 73 million people we have oriented and reached to them through messaging, uh, uh, information and all these things. And we distributed food packages, 2 million people's hygiene products are distributed. More than 100,000 staff of BRACs are at the field to do response. And 350,000 families receive cash grants. And during uh, Cyclone Amplan, Ampan, we distributed crash cans, food packages, safe drinking water, and packets of orsaline to reduce diarrhea. And also we are distributing dry food and pure drinking water responding to the uh, seasonal flooding happening at this moment. We are working with the city authority to do response, uh, especially in the urban slum due to dengue. And you know, during this COVID period, there are significant amount of extra medical waste management due to PPA and all other things is added to our waste management, which is very dangerous because the city workers are poor labor. They don't have enough protection. They are cleaning. So it is, which is a very critical issue. We are working with the government and also city corporations. And we are acquiring the uh, cleaners so that it can be managed properly and government has to do their part rightly. The community-driven management models, BRAC practicing in the slums, shows us 
community leaders are the are the main responder during COVID, and they help the community better. Next slide. So I'm I'm just uh, briefly describing some of the approach in respect to climate change we are uh, doing during COVID. Is we prioritizing center most vulnerable population, like the urban slum, and also the rural vulnerable uh, pockets. And we are interested in really we found the integration and collaborations during the COVID is the more vital things because health issue maintaining the social distance, maintaining the uh, wearing the mask, hand sanitizing, and doing things in extra a way, need extra money. And also monitoring and quality has to be maintained because we are not frequently going to the field. We have to rely on local government institution and the community leader we have identified. They are the center, they are the crucial. And implementation of climate adaptive smart agriculture because we have to make a balance between life and livelihood. Because we cannot compromise uh, livelihood uh, with the life. Both, of, both are important. We have One minute left. And replicate some very small scale resilient uh, uh, housing come shelters. Because in Bangladesh, there are a huge amount of cyclone centers. But these are very small, uh, low cost housing shelter we are doing at the cyclone prone area. And implementing context specific very water solutions like movable hand washing device for the public places as well as for the slum, maintaining social distance and promoting climate adaptive alternative livelihood models. I think you have already heard of some of them. We gave some livelihood support to the poor, uh, vulnerable people living in the slum, also the climate vulnerable spots. Next slide. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Leocat. That's been really interesting. And some of the things that have come out from the presentations, <clears throat> for me at least, the role of indigenous knowledge, um, the role of nature-based solutions, uh, and ensuring that livelihoods are resilient enough to withstand the different kinds of crises. It's also been particularly interesting to see how central uh, communities and community members have been to organizing local responses, rather than relying on uh, larger organizations uh, externally. Now, I am aware that I promised a Q&A, but we're also running out of time. So what I'm going to do is continue to encourage the very healthy looking discussion that's happening in the chat box. If you do want to ask questions to the presenters, please do put those in the chat and the, uh, uh, the uh, speakers can respond in the chat box. But for now, I'm going to hand over back to Margot, Bettina and Pablo, who can introduce the live updated cartoons from earlier. Thank you. Uh, greetings, team. It is a very interesting feat to see all of us across continents trying to have a CBA experience despite the distance. Um, if you could stop sharing screen on your end so I can soon begin to share screen on my end. Thank you very much. So friends, we are having a virtual experience of community-based adaptation and there's a lot of learning we have to accomplish, right? We know there are different levels of technology, different levels of familiarity, different bandwidths and so on. We see all these questions coming through the chat box. We want this to continue being alive. Remember this session is a taster session for what will follow. I am going to share with you a three of the cartoons that were created by the artists. Let me see, this, this is now the part where I have to push buttons and I am capable of messing up. There we go. So let's see, share screen, Firefox, share, and let's hope this works. So this is one of the, uh, very unconventional cartoons, if you want, from uh, Rebecca Rivola. She took a photo from Southern Africa, from a village in Malawi, and used it to depict what are the trends in global climate finance. Notice that it's been going up, but now with COVID and other things, maybe it's not going in the direction we want. But in the bottom, what is the actual funding going to vulnerable communities? 
this is what you told us that uh, matters. Rebecca, if you are there, would you like to share any quick insights about the process of coming up with this? Hello, everybody. Pablo, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Awesome. So I chose this one um, partly because I got the feedback very late in the game and this one was quite easy to make changes to. But I, I implemented the, the changes in the curves before the, the climate finance curve was going up, the other one was going up slightly and the feedback was to, to have the climate, climate finance curve come down a bit and it got me thinking about how with that curve coming down, there's room for interpretation. That curve coming down can be seen as an opportunity for those people who are on the bottom curve to maybe reach up to it. It can also be seen as a compression of those individuals who are between the two curves. So I think that it, it provides a space to have an interesting discussion. And I also wanted to briefly bring up in the context of this and the other cartoons, a couple comments that came up, I think in the, in the general chat. And there were some critiques about how the cartoons were maybe oversimplifying some problems um, not giving a nuanced perspective of, of how solutions could be could be a mix between some of the various options that we gave um, in some of our our collective suite of cartoons there and then there was one on how there was a predominantly western perspective in the cartoons and i wanted to say that i think when cartoons can bring out these kinds of threads can I identify that this kind of thinking um, whether it's a lack of nuance or a predominantly Western perspective, if cartoons can identify that that kind of thinking is existing within a group and people can look at something on paper and say like, look, that is where the bias is, then I think the cartoons are doing their job. Uh, so I hope that um, as cartoonists myself, I've learned a lot from this experience and I hope that uh, these cartoons can continue to be of use to you all when we share them with you after the cartoonathon. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Rebecca. So moving on to a next cartoon. This is by Emily Flake. You have seen the draft. This is what she did based on your feedback and with the draft. And if you're talking about nature-based solution, who to learn better from than from our own very mother earth? Emily, would you like to share any insights about the process? So I chose this one out of all the drafts I did because, um, because it got the most comments and the most positive feedback and I am very um, into being liked. So I wanted to um, choose the one that people liked the most. So um, the, the thinking here was to sort of highlight the idea that, um, that the, the earth has a lot of solutions if we can only listen to it. And I wanted also to go with this one over then the others because I felt that using the planet as sort of the main character in their, this cartoon allowed for sort of a more global perspective on it. Um, so yeah, I, was, um, I thought the feedback was very helpful and I liked the process of, of hearing all the things people were, were bringing to the viewing of, the, of these cartoons that I myself would have missed. Uh, so I thought this was great. Thank you, everybody. Pat Burns, funding stream. Guess what? Money is coming, but then it doesn't get there where we need it. If only we knew. At the community level, we need to acknowledge that this is happening at all scales, and we claim there's a problem, but we need to be a better part of the solution. Pat, would you like to share any thoughts about this? This one, I, I think the thing that... Um, I, I appreciated the comments, but somebody made the suggestion. My original didn't have a waterfall at the beginning, and it, there was this gap there that I always felt was not quite right. But the waterfall, uh, I, I felt, was a, a really strong suggestion uh, because it, it, it seems to resonate with, uh, with people. Say we, we see this, this gushing of a funding, and then what does it turn into because of probably all the inefficiencies of well, – people moving paper around, uh, that the actual work, the, the hands-on work of doing the job is, the, is, the, is kind of the end of that funding stream. And so everybody's dipped into it pretty heavily before um, the money actually gets where it's supposed to be. Um, so I just uh, went with that resonance that seemed to uh, connect. And I've seen some of the comments like, you know, what are the solutions? And 
I agree that that is a, well, it was a frustration for me to try and redraw that in the time allotted and uh, get it uploaded. It's, um, it's a function of time to sit and figure out what solutions might be. And um, I think that would be a, a wonderful endeavor to, to spend the time uh, really thinking deeply about what kind of fluky uh, solutions there might be. So uh, that, I'm afraid, is further downstream. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. And uh, friends, we're about to finish. Before I, I pass over back to Sam, quick remarks. We at the Red Cross Red Crescent Climate Center I find, are finding that humor allows two things. One is the creation of intelligent communication, strategic, common instance for conversing. These cartoons will be made available to you via IIED. Three are ready. Three more will be polished by the artists over the coming hours or days. And what we want to highlight is that you all felt very comfortable in the audience being very candid, very outspoken. Why is it this way? What are we doing? I want access. Where's my password? Humor can embolden. Humor can make us stronger in having a shared time, recognizing the problem and wanting the solutions. Cartoons will not solve the world, but it will make us have richer conversations if we want to pursue together what the world needs for community-based adaptation. We wish you a wonderful CBA 14, the real one. This was just a taster. We're continuing to polish the process, the cartooning, the digital platform for viewing, and so on. Thank you, CBA friends. Thank you, Climate Justice Resilience uh, Fund for the support for this process. And we move it onwards to Sam for the concluding remarks. Thanks very much. Thank you, Pablo, and thank you to the cartoonists for uh, uh, rapidly updating those. That's absolutely fantastic. And there is yeah. certainly some good feedback coming in through the chat. So I'd just like to give a quick overview before everybody rushes off of the road to CBA 14. I hope that this session raised more questions than it solved for you. I hope it gave you a taste of what we're aiming for. We're aiming for CBA to be interactive, engaging, to have plenty of online opportunities to network and share ideas and uh, 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 create a platform where community and grassroots voices can absolutely continue to be heard. And of course, responding to the feedback in the box, there will be plenty more time for breakout discussions. So where can you register? If you follow the link here, and my colleagues will also post that in the chat box, iied.org forward slash CBA 14, you'll be able not only to find links to registration, but also links to view the program. You can also, in the meantime, join the conversation. If you join the weadapt.org and find the CBA network, you're able to join some of the discussion boards that are already there and share your perspectives or start your own discussion boards on some of the key questions that you think we should be discussing at CBA 14. We want this opportunity to be something that you can feed into. So please do join the CBA network on weadapt.org or use the hashtag CBA 14. One final thing on the road to CBA 14. As we build up to the conference, we'll be having a series of meet and greets. We'll be asking key individuals to host one hour sessions with them and with 10 to 15 other people so that you can build your network in advance, begin the discussions early and have an opportunity to engage with others from our community who are working on community based adaptation from around the world. The sooner that you sign up to the platform, the sooner that these meet and greets will be available to you and there will be another fascinating opportunity to engage with others and hear the new perspectives. So I want to say thank you to all of us for joining us again. We have everything in the chat box saved uh, and the recording will be available. Please look at the chat box for a link for the recording and uh, 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 follow us on social media and other emails uh, in order to see all of that. And of course, if there is any feedback, there will be a feedback form coming around to you by email as well. So thank you all again. And it's been a pleasure to join this session with you today. Enjoy the rest of your day.